Welcome to Thurman Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak. It's Saturday. Our first stakes race of the meeting takes place today. It is the Little Miss Magic Stakes, the fifth race on the card. Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, going to be going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. Plus, we have a carryover in the Rainbow Six. It's going to be a great day. Some very competitive races, great betting races on the card. Let's get right to things. Here are the track and weather conditions. The main track is fast and the turf course is firm. The first race on Saturday's 10 race program is a $50,000 maiden claiming event. Two year olds will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the six, Brunello music. From the outside, that's Big City Hard who wins the break. Drama Club is showing speed. Amelia's Wild Kitty comes away in the top flight. She's moving between horses to be third. Followed by Eric's Talisman, then to the inside, Extravagant Kid. Great Smoke splits horses third last. Second last is Second Chance, and the first timer, Horse Spotter Carl, is last of all inside half a mile away. They move into the far turn. Drama Club has a narrow lead. Three wide here's Eric's Talisman, and from between horses, Big City Heart. These top three have gone two better than Amelia's Wild Kitty, who's in front of Great Smoke. Then to the inside, it's Extravagant Kid, followed by Second Chance and Horse Spotter Carl. They run to the top of the stretch. Drama Club cuts the corner with a narrow lead, but Eric's Talisman has momentum on the outside, and Big City Hardest come boxing on between horses for Gary Bain. Down the outside, Extravagant Kid begins to finish with interest. Through the final furlong, Drama Club on a two-length lead. Extravagant Kid trying to get to him in the late stages, but Drama Club holds firm, and it's Drama Club and Edgar Zayas moving away to win it by two. Second Extravagant Kid give Big City Heart the Third over Eric's Talisman and second chance to complete your high five in 57 flat. Drama Club draws off to take the Saturday opener. Edgar Zayas was aboard for trainer David Fox and owner Sandra New. Drama Club paid $5.20 to win and break his maiden today in his third career start. Today's second race is an allowance. Florida bred Phillies and Mares three year olds and up will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report. A field of seven will go to the post. Zero. From the outside, Gato Dorado and Cowtown Spirit both win the start. I'm Crazy For You moves up and down to the inside. That's Mom's Laugh moving to challenge in tight early was Flash Jack. Flasting Friendships is on her outside. And the early trailer is the gray Silver Fog. Down the back stretch they go, and Gato Dorado at 17 to 1 is crossed in front to lead it. On the outside, Mom's Laugh turns up the pressure. Second, Cowtown Spirit is third at the half mile pole. Lasting Friendships is on the improve while fourth. I'm Crazy For You is now shuffled back on the outside. Silver Fog gets underway, and trailing the field is Flashjack. There's three furlongs left to go. Here's Silver Fog on the outside trying to make ground from the back. Meanwhile, the leader, Mom's Laugh. From between horses, it's Lasting Friendships. Up on the outside, Silver Fog continues to charge. Back forth is Gato Dorado, then Cowtown Spirit, and I'm crazy for you with a quarter of a mile left to go. From between horses, Lasting Friendships goes up to put ahead in front. Mom's Laugh counter punches from the inside. Down the outside, Silver Fog third from the far outside, and I'm crazy for you through the final furlong. Mom's Laugh on the inside. Lasting Friendships. Friendships put to pressure on the outside. Nothing giving an inch inside the 16th pole, but Mom's Laugh pulling out all the stops. And Mom's Laugh and Matt Rispoli will prevail. Lasting Friendships second. I'm crazy for you third. Then Cowtown Spirit and Silver Fog and 112 and four. Mom's Laugh is a comfortable winner of the second race. Matt Rispoli was the winning rider for trainer Marcus Vitali and owners A. Bianco Holding. Mom's Laugh paid $5 to win. Charman goes down the outside. Charman goes chasing Danish Dynaformer. Danish Dynaformer. Charman Ghost. And Charman Ghost takes the Queen's Plate a length. And taking the 156th running of the Queen's Plate is Charman Ghost, beautifully bred by Ghost Zapper. Classic Bloodlines, Classic Sire, Ghost Zapper, standing at Adina Springs. The third race is also an allowance, this one with an optional claiming tag of $12,500. Florida bred three-year-olds and up will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. They're off. 
from the inside, metaphorically gets the first call with Heart Doctor right alongside. Starship Frontier is moving to them, and now Starship Frontier puts ahead in front as they run down the chute for their and under the wire for the first time. The leader, Starship Frontier by almost two, metaphorically taken in hand to be second from Heart Doctor, who's now third. Two-step temper is next, followed by Moana Dance. Roll on the Navajo's a bit keen in front of Amigo, who's also a bit keen. Imagine that come mom to the inside, and the trailer is blessed with prayer. They run around the opening turn, and Starship Frontier throttles open under jockey Edgar Zayas to lead it by three and a half lengths. Metaphorically is second, two better than Heart Doctor third. Two-step Temper is now fourth. He's about six and a half off the lay down. Then it's Roll on the Navajo with Bawana Dance, followed by Imagine That Mom. Amigo is second last and two better than Blessed with Prayer, who is the trailer, after an opening quarter in 24 and 2. Down the back stretch they go. They went a half mile in 50 and 2. And on top, the leader is still Starship Frontier by a length and a half. Tightening in a bit second is metaphorically Heart Doctor third. Two-step temper now fourth, but Wanna Dance fifth. Roll on the Navajo on the outside sixth in front of Amigo seventh. Imagine that mom is eighth and blessed with prayers ninth and last as they move into the far turn with three furlongs left to go. On top, the leader still Starship Frontier, three parts of a length. Now here's metaphorically up the challenge in second. Two lengths back to the outside, two-step temper, third, then roll on the Navajo. Amigo covers ground on the far outside, and Heart Doctor saves ground along the inside. Top of the lane, metaphorically, now makes a break for home, leads it by two. Down the center, and Amigo up the inside in Starship Frontier. Imagine that mom looking for room. Here comes Amigo and Carabao over the top. Metaphorically is in front, but Amigo has him on the outside, and Amigo and Jose Carabao win it going away. Metaphorically second, roll on the Navajo third, then Starship Frontier fourth and 145 and one. Amigo rallies to take the third race. Jose Caraballo was aboard for trainer Joseph Hennessy and owners Aaron Dell. Amigo returned $7.40 for his victory today. On to the fourth race now, a $6,250 claiming event. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the seven, see the judge. They're up. From the center, Prince Harlan begins very well. Up on the outside, never in trouble, is showing speed. Toward the rail, Fugazi Boy and Riley and Jack makes it four out of the six across the track. It's a stretch of two and a half to Heat Star, and wide at the back, the trailer here is he did it his way. Might be an equipment problem there. Ryder might have lost an iron. Down the back stretch they go. They still continue. Now four across the track. From the inside out, Fugazi Boy leads Riley and Jack. Up on the far outside, never in trouble with Prince Harlan three wide. They went 22 and three for the opening quarter speed. They've put four on Heat Star, who's had pace to chase, and he did it his way, still having trouble at the back. Less than three-eighths of a mile away toward the inside. Riley and Jack far outside, never in trouble. He's getting out a bit, though. And in between horses, it's Prince Harlan at the rail and Fugazi Boy. Past the quarter-mile pole, never in trouble, out and about the eighth path. Tries to go up and take the lead. Riley and Jack cuts the corner. Meanwhile, never in trouble is doing slightly the better work. Riley and Jack set down driving by Rispoli, trying to outrun him in the final furlong from Prince Harlan and Heat Star. Through the final furlong, never in trouble, way out in the center. He did it his way, is rolling now. He'll get second. But he can't catch Never in Trouble, who moves clear. Never in Trouble to win it by two and a half. He did it his way, got up for second in front of Heat Star third, then Riley and Jack fourth in 113 and two. Never in Trouble rolls down the center of the track to take the fourth race. Octavio Vergara Jr. was aboard for the victory for trainer Dennis Manning and owners Flea Market Racing. Never in Trouble returned $4.40 to win. Today's fifth race is the feature. This is the $75,000 Little Miss Magic Stakes. Phillies and Mares three rolls and up will be going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. A field of eight will go to the post. And they're off in the Little Miss Magic Stakes. Level beginning. From the center, that's In My Time, who reaches out to take the early lead. Laurie Storr comes away racing in second today, with Tiz Duet moving up on the outside. Zlati is now fourth, ahead better than Kittens Dumplings in fifth. Followed inside by Latik, second last is prayed for, and the early trailer is Weekend Appeal. They come under the wire for the first time with In My Time leading narrowly. Tiz Duet up on the outside, second. Lori Storr and Hernandez in a good spot early while third. A length and a half in front of Zlati, fourth. Then it's Kittens Dumplings with Latique. A bit wide through the initial stages is prayed for, and the trailer is weekend appeal. Around the first turn they go. They win an opening quarter, 24-1. and one. And with the lead, In My Time by a length. 
Long shot, Tiz Duet keeps her honest while second. Lori Storr is third. Zlotty moves up on the inside, fourth. Then to the outside, it's Kittens Dumplings racing in fifth now. Latique to her inside. Prayed for is still wide and still last as weekend appeal. 50 and 1 for the opening half mile. They move now to the far turn run. In my time, leads at three parts of a length. Tiz Duet is second. Moving up on the inside, it's Latique now third in front of Lori Storr, who's racing in fourth from Zlotty next. Then it's the favorite Kittens Dumplings, about five lengths off the lead as they swing to the far turn. Weekend Appeal is second last and Prayed For is now last as they run around the far turn, less than five sixteenths to go. On the outside, Latique bids up three wide with In My Time holding a narrow lead. Here's Lori Storr, five wide, just to her inside and Kittens Dumplings, and they're at the top of the stretch. Wide open from the outside, Kittens Dumplings comes to converge on the leaders and Lori Storr is on her outside. Latique back third, Zlotty's up the rail. Through the final furlongs, Kittens Dumplings just took the lead and Kittens Dumplings is running away. Kittens Dumplings for the Ramses to win it by two and a half. Zlotty up second in front of Lori Storr third, then Latique fourth and prayed for for fifth in 150 flat. Kittens Dumplings impresses in the fifth race. The former grade one winner is much the best here under Rafael Hernandez. Mike Maker was the winning trainer for winning owners Ken and Sarah Ramsey. Kittens Dumplings, winner of the 2013 grade one QE2, returns $4.60 to get back in the winner's circle in the Little Miss Magic Stakes today. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. Race number six is a $25 to $30,000 claiming event. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races, will be sprinting six and a half furlongs on the main track. Scratch the one running cat. They're up. From the outside, Ausable begins the best. El Caravan is showing speed. Here's Chief Envoy from down toward the inside. Chief Envoy comes on to be second behind Ausable, who leads as they run out of the chute. Al Caravan is racing in third from the favorite sports book who sets up shop fourth. Three better than the gray Loudon's gray and son of a preacher is the trailer. As they run down the backstretch, they're separated by seven lengths with less than five furlongs to run. On top, Ausable by two and a half. Chief Envoy is second. Moving up on the outside, Al Caravan third. Sportsbook now fourth. Then to the rail at Son of a Preacher fifth. And trailing the field is Loudon's Gray. They went 22 and four for the opening quarter speed. They swing around the far turn. Three furlongs left to go. Ausable leads it a half a length. Chief Envoy moves to him second. Al Caravan third. Sportsbook comes under a ride while fourth. Then it's a gap back to the trailer, Son of a Preacher, and Loudon's Gray. Top of the stretch, less than a quarter of a mile to go. Chief Envoy bids up on the outside of Ausable for the top with Al Caravan and the lime colors on the outside. Then it's Sportsbook. 3 16ths to go. Gonzalez goes to work on Chief Envoy, who's now driving into the lead. From the back, and Loudon's Gray is coming on. Al Caravan and Son of a Preacher are next. Through the final furlong, Chief Envoy has the lead. Up into second is Loudon's Gray, but Chief Envoy will hold firm. Chief Envoy, the winner by a length and a half. Loudon's Gray got up for second. Al Caravan third, and Son of a Preacher finished fourth. And 118 and three. Chief Envoy gets the victory in the sixth race. Jonathan Gonzalez was aboard for trainer Marty Wolfson and owners Stars Racing LLC. Chief Envoy returned $10.60 for the victory. The seventh race is a $12,500 meeting claiming event. Phillies and Mares three-year-olds and up will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the five and the 12. That means the 11 does get in. They're up. From the outside, Pam Pam and Awesome Sunrise begin the best. Moving up toward the inside is Oprana. Kept the Faith is at the rail. She comes away fourth. From between horses, Starship Senorita moves up now. Up on the outside, some kind of fabulous. And also splitting horses is ay ay ay. Then from the back, it's Sermonetta. About six lengths off the lead. And three clear of the two trailers, Breeze and Bree. And with a kiss. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. From the 11 post, Pam Pam crosses over and has the lead. Up on the outside, ay 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 is now racing in second. 
second from between horses, Starship Senorita. She looks for a racing room from third. From fourth is Awesome Sunrise, wide on the outside and trying to improve some kind of fabulous in the wrap the top of the stretch. Pam Pam turns first with the lead. Toward the inside, Starship Senorita tries to get to her and kept the faith, has got a good stride. She's down the center at a big price. Inside the final furlong, Pam Pam, the leader. Starship Senorita on the inside second. Kept the faith is now third. Coming to the finish, it will be Pam Pam. Hanging on. Starship Senorita second, kept the faith third in front of With a Kiss, who ran on to be fourth in 57 and four. Pam Pam draws in from the AE list and gets the victory in today's seventh race. Jose Cruz was the winning rider for trainer Alan Mirage and owner Nisha Patel. Pam Pam paid $7.20 to win. The eighth race is a $6,250 claiming event. Three-year-olds and up, which have not won three races or three-year-olds, will be going seven furlongs on the main track. A field of 11 will go to the post. They're off. From the outside, Bellamy Storm wins the break and goes looking for the lead with Aka Paquito from the top shelf moving to challenge. These two are two better than some Midnight Star. Moving up is One-Eyed Candy Ride, followed by Not Welcome. In between horses, that's the Sun Drop Kid. Moving up on his outside is General Shaman mid-flight, about six lengths off the lead. Stretch of four more to Royal Grant. He has two and a half on Massive, and creative quality is last of all and better than 11 lengths off the lead as they run to the half-mile pole. On top, the leader continues to be Bellamy Storm, pushed along by the outside running Aka Paquito. They're in lockstep. They're two and a half lengths better than an inside running one-eyed Candy Ride. Then it's to the outside and moving closer, some Midnight Star. Not welcome put into the clear. He's fifth, starting to gain a bit of ground now, followed by the Sun Drop Kid, then General Shema. Four more to the inside. That's Royal Grant. Massive's lugging out, and the trailer is creative quality. They went 45 seconds for an opening half mile, and Bellamy Storm still does all the heavy lifting at the quarter pole, but still is the one to beat. Trying to get after him is some midnight star. Not welcome put to a full drive. He'll have to do much better than that with three sixteenths to go. Bellamy Storm shaken up for the drive by Jonathan Gonzalez responding with a three length lead. Some Midnight Star, not welcome second and third. Down the outside, it's the Sun Drop Kid. But Bellamy Storm has run them off their feet to win. Bellamy Storm coast to coast and three and a half in front. Some Midnight Star second, not welcome third. The Sun Drop Kid fourth. And General Shema completes your high five in 123 and three. Bellamy Storm cannot be caught in the eighth race. Jonathan Gonzalez notches his second victory of the day. The winning trainer, Enrique Arroyo, and the winning owner, Luis M. Tapia. Bellamy Storm returned $22.80 for his victory. The ninth race is a $16,000 claiming event. Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, which have not won two races, will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Ten will go to the post. And they're up. From the outside, gold value begins nicely. So, too, does the outside running Westbrook Sunset and Angel Falls moves up. Down to the inside, here's Samus moving to challenge. And emerging between horses, Red Aguia puts ahead in front. So it's Red Agui ahead, better than Angel Falls, then Gold Value and Samus. Westbrook Sunset is off the speed with Like a Charm to her inside. Stretch of three to Starship Tammy, then to the outside it's Mystic Blue. Stretch of two and a half to In a Moment's Notice, and the trailer is Spectacular Sharon. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn, less than three furlongs to go. Three wide, Gold Value, from between them Angel Falls, Red Agui along the inside. Tipping off cover to rally home is Mystic Blue, and also there Westbrook Sunset, wide open, but Mystic Blue coming over the top with momentum. Here's Mystic Blue to take the lead now. Starship Tammy working between horses down the outside and in a moment's notice, but Mystic Blue is clear to the finish. Mystic Blue and Carabao to take another one and win it by three in the end. Like a charm shook loose to get second from in a moment's notice third, then Starship Tammy and Westbrook Sunset. 
Mystic Blue kicks clear to take the ninth race. Jose Caraballo notches a riding double of his own today for winning trainer Joseph Hennessy and winning owners Aaron Dell. Mystic Blue paid $19.40 to win. The 10th and final race on today's program is a $10,000 claimer, three-year-olds and up. We'll be going a mile in a 16th on the turf course, scratch the nine, and all of the also eligibles, the 11, 12, 13, and 14. And runners away. From the far outside, happy to be here, wins the break, and we'll try to cross and clear toward the inside for all the marble comes away in second. Sneaky Kitten is now racing in third. Presumptive is a bit wide, but taken in hand to try to drop over with Cactus Kid between horses. Followed by Muser, then Gamblin' Fever, who's two in front of Mutisadir, and the stretch-running Giant Cat is last of all. They bend into the first turn toward the inside for all the marbles pressured outside by Happy to Be Here. They're in lockstep. Racing third is Cactus Kid, racing about two off the lead. Then it's Sneaky Kitten, followed by Presumptive and Muser. Up on the outside, Gamblin' Fever, who has two lengths on Mutisadir. And Giant Cat is the trailer, and he spots the leaders about nine lengths as they bend into the back stretch. With the lead, it's for all the marbles through an opening quarter in 23-3. and three. Pushed along by Longshot, happy to be here. Their heads apart, and they're now open three on Cactus Kid, who's racing in third. Toward the inside, Sneaky Kitten is next. Then to the outside, it's presumptive. It's a stretch of a length and a half to Giant Cat, who's improving between horses. Covering him is Gamblin' Fever. Muse her up the inside. Now the trailer is Muta Sadir. They move into the far turn for all the marbles chirped along. Happy to be here. Keeps it to him on the outside. These two still better than Cactus Kid. Rispoli just waiting in the wings here, guiding the veteran campaigner to the outside for a clear shot. Followed by presumptive and giant cat sneaky kittens up the inside. He's trying to negotiate a trip here off the top of the turn. With the lead now, Cactus Kid cut loose and opens three. Presumptive in a wall of pursuers, including sneaky kitten giant cat. From the outside, gambling fever. Muser picks a path between them. Inside the final first. Long Cactus Kid still has the lead. Muser's getting loose late. He's coming on. He's flying too, but he's out of time. The winner is Cactus Kid. Wow, did Muser come rolling, but I don't think he got there. Third was Gambling, or rather Sneaky Kitten, and 144 and 2. Muser gets up at the wire in the 10th race. Rodney Sudin was the winning rider for trainer James McMullen and owner's Pink Flamingo Racing Stables. Muser returned $27.80 to win. And here's how our exotic wagers paid today. The pick four, 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 eight thousand five hundred sixty-four dollars and eighty-five cents. There'll be a carryover in the pick five, four of five, paid three hundred sixty-three dollars and fifteen cents. The carryover for Sunday, ten thousand eight hundred ninety-four dollars and fifty-five cents. The rainbow six was hit today. It returned forty-two thousand thirty dollars and eight cents. Congratulations to the single winning ticket holder in the rainbow six. It'll start anew tomorrow. That's going to do it for Saturday's program. We're going to wrap up our five-day race week tomorrow on Sunday, and the stakes action continues. We have the Spider John stakes. Three-year-olds and up going to be going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. This time the males will get their chance to go a mile and an eighth on the grassy surface here at Gulfstream Park West. In this race, we have grade one winner Lochte. He loves South Florida. He won the Gulfstream Park turf handicap back in 2014. And last time out, he continued his winning ways when winning the Mr. Steel Stakes over at Gulfstream. That was on September 27th. He was a four and a half length winner. Pretty impressive, much the best that day. The Marcus Vitali Barn, they have been red hot at this meeting. They're going to look to continue that streak and they have a pretty nice chance with Lochte tomorrow. He is by and large the class of this field. Of course, there'll be plenty of competition, including the English bred Slim Shady shipping in from New York for trainer David Jacobson and Morning Calm winner of the Raymond Earl Handicap back in May over at Gulfstream for Michelle Nihe. It is going to be another fun day here in Miami Gardens and I'll see you back here in 24 hours. For all of us here at Gulfstream Park West, thanks for watching Thoroughbred Action. I'm Katie Stazak.